This is, I guess this is a Jim Cramer gives and takes. Uh, Jim Cramer, Donald Trump gave a xenophobic, ridiculous, um, and not comforting to the markets, which was obviously his goal speech last night. It was to rev up the base, comfort the markets. It didn't work. And Jim Cramer and CNBC actually has a, tells us partially why. The federal government could tide us over here. I, I don't want everything closed. I want everything to work smoothly. And the only way to work smoothly is to take advantage of what the rates are and for the federal government to borrow as much as possible and then give it to us. This can be returned after we get healthy. Do we want to come in here every day and see which CEO is taken down by this illness, how many workers are taken down? No. What we have to do is be able to say, you know what, no matter what, the country will keep running because money is not a necessity at this time. Have you seen any signs at all from our leaders in Washington and this administration that they believe the problem is as significant as you think it is? Absolutely not. They know nothing. They know nothing. Right. We know more than they do. <laughs> and that's not acceptable either. I want the federal government to know more than me. All right? <laughs> I knew more than they did in 2007, and I know more than they do now. And it is disappointing. Perhaps they should talk to more leaders, and leaders can be more candid. But this is a situation where if everybody takes down the revolver, David, at the same time, we're not going to be worried about the companies to take down the revolver. Okay, so Jim Cramer, by the way, I, I look into the whole new about 2007 thing. Mm. I have slightly yeah. different memory. Yeah, I have a little bit of a different memory of Jim Cramer's uh, role in the financial crisis and the global Wall Street uh, wealth uh, theft uh, of that time. But he made some really solid points there, but he is on CNBC. So what do you need to do? I'm assuming this happened later in the day. Well, whether they're not... This happened later. Just recognize that this is the same person in a very short period of time, a person who just made some very astute points. And Brendan was saying in the office, we all understand the part about medicine and infrastructure that this is sending us. Uh, and the other message is like, we actually could all work a lot less. And uh, it's totally not necessary to just completely kill ourselves. And and the government and, can just and, decide and to cover like the government uh, could just, just cover it. Yeah. Look at the ways in which all these like several, you know, blue states have decided to just waive costs and deductibles for these treatment plans. It's like they just decided mm -hmm. it unilaterally. Yeah. And, and guess what? The Supreme Court isn't going to do anything because they need to maintain this moment right now and not have a complete mm -hmm. meltdown. Exactly. And so uh, all that's true. But Jim Cramer, he needs to remind everybody on CNBC that it's all OK. Yeah, Meg, in every pandemic of any major proportion, including the 1958 uh, incredible flu. Long time ago. Just want to point that out there. Long time ago. 1958, uh, incredible flu season. There's always a tremendous number of people who die overseas, and the public health system is just so poor overseas in so many countries. Obviously, it's overseas? very bad in uh, Italy, even though I thought that the northern Italy had to, to dealt with that system pretty good. Can we distinguish, start distinguishing between the rest of the world and United States? Because we've never had the same lethality rate in any flu that uh, the rest of the world has, because I really think that the WHO, which has really particularly done a terrible job, is just scaring the heck out of people. <laughs> I also love the juxtaposition of it's WHO. I was just actually on national television saying the government's completely idiotic, and incompetent, and threatening all of our lives. Um